Growing up, only one narrative of slavery was taught to me. Millions of black people were enslaved by white people in the transatlantic slave trade for hundreds of years. This is true, of course, but it would have been very helpful if nuances were included in this narrative. Slavery was not limited to a specific race or period of time, but rather an institution deeply ingrained in human society since the ancient times. And the effort to bring it to an end was exceptional and unparalleled in history. Today, we will begin exploring these nuances by exploring three uncomfortable truths about slavery. In the 16th to the 19th century, pirates from the Ottoman Empire would capture and enslave European people from European coastal areas. Yes, white people. They would then transport them to North Africa. This was known as the Barbary pirate slave trade, as this was carried out by North African pirates from the Barbary states, which included places in present-day Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and parts of Libya. The Barbary pirate slave trade emerged as early as the 9th century, when Arab forces began expanding into North Africa. Over time, various groups emerged and established independent states in the region, which later became known as the Barbary states. These states would engage in piracy as a means to accumulate wealth and power. The motivations were mainly economic. Capturing and enslaving people could provide a lucrative source of income, as slaves could be sold in markets or ransomed for large sums of money. The captured Europeans would be used as laborers, soldiers, or concubines within the Barbary states. Barbary pirates targeted European coastal areas and ships traveling in the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. They would launch surprise attacks marked by speed, violence, and brutality on unsuspecting victims. Coastal communities were pillaged, ships would be raided, often resulting in the massacre of crews and capture of the survivors. Slavery under the Barbary pirates was brutal and marked by harsh conditions and limited rights for the slaves. They were often subject to physical abuse, including beatings and torture. The living conditions for the slaves varied depending on their roles and their treatment by their owners, ranging from relatively comfortable households to working in harsh and overcrowded ships. Male slaves captured by the Barbary pirates were forced into hard labor. Many of them would work in agriculture, construction, or mining activities. They were subjected to long working hours, often performing backbreaking tasks under harsh conditions. Physical abuse and punishment were common, and slaves were frequently deprived of basic rights and freedoms. Able-bodied men and older boys were frequently assigned to serve on the Barbary pirate ships. Slaves endured extremely grueling conditions, rowing for hours on end in cramped and overcrowded spaces. They were often subjected to brutal treatment, cruel discipline, including whippings and beatings. Female slaves were usually assigned to domestic servitude. They served in households or harems, or as concubines to wealthy North African families. Their duties included cleaning, cooking, childcare, and other household tasks. While their conditions were generally better than that of the male slaves, they still faced numerous challenges and vulnerabilities, including exploitation and abuse. Enslaved individuals occupied the lowest part of the societal hierarchy and were considered more property than humans. They would be completely dependent on their owners for their well-being and were often subjected to arbitrary control and mistreatment. It is estimated that this slave trade of mainly white people resulted in the capture and enslavement of some 1 to 1.5 million people. Now that's wild. Schoolboy numbers when compared to what comes next though. Now, forget about the Barbary slave trade. The Ottoman Empire was also going crazy within Africa with the Trans-Saharan slave trade, also known as the Arab slave trade of Africans. This slave trade predates the transatlantic slave trade and was even being practiced in ancient times. Fueled by several factors, including economic, cultural, and religious motivations, Arab traders would source African slaves from parts of modern day West, East, and Central Africa. The trade routes of the Arab slave trade were diverse and interconnected. The primary routes included, as the name suggests, the Trans-Saharan trade route. This involved the transportation of slaves across the Sahara Desert to North Africa and the Middle East. It was a long and treacherous journey that involved caravans traversing vast desert landscapes. There was also the East African Swahili coast route, where Arab traders established trading posts and settlements along the East African coast. From these coastal hubs, slaves would be transported to various destinations in the Arabian Peninsula, Persia, and the Indian Ocean region. African individuals were captured by raids, warfare, and kidnapping. Slave traders often formed alliances with African kingdoms and tribes to facilitate the capture and supply of slaves. 
Some African rulers actively participated in the slave trade, while others would resist and attempt to protect their population. African captives were then subjected to long and perilous journeys to slave markets or coastal ports, where they were sold to Arab traders. The captives would endure harsh conditions, forced marches, physical abuse, and a high mortality rate during the journey. The treatment and condition of African slaves would depend on the specific circumstances and attitudes of individual slave owners. However, many endured harsh and oppressive conditions. African slaves were often subjected to physical abuse, including beatings and torture. Sexual exploitation was also common, particularly for female slaves who were used as concubines. Again, slaves would be used for various forms of labor, including agricultural work, mining, construction, and domestic chores. They worked under harsh conditions, long hours with minimal rest. Overall, the Arab slave trade of Africans was a vast and devastating system that involved the capture, transportation, and enslavement of millions of Africans. It is estimated that between six to 10 million Africans were enslaved under this system, with estimates going as high as 18 million. Now this compares in scale to the transatlantic slave trade, where estimates are around 10 to 12 million Africans being enslaved. Now, you mean to tell me that the Arab slave trade took place over a longer period of time and also enslaved millions of Africans? Wait, why don't we learn about this? The last uncomfortable truth is the fact that Britain was critical in ending the transatlantic slave trade. So you mean to tell me that this nation or empire that's so synonymous with the profiteering of the transatlantic slave trade or the exploitation of colonialism was one of the first to say, well, maybe this is wrong and maybe we should take action to end it. The intellectual foundations of the opposition to slavery are rooted in the humanism movement of the enlightenment. In the late 18th century, voices opposing slavery began to emerge in Britain. Influential figures such as William Wilberforce, Granville Sharp, and Thomas Clarkson played a pivotal role in raising awareness and advocating for the abolishment of the slave trade and of slavery itself. They formed the Committee for the Abolition of the Slave Trade in 1787, which became a driving force behind the movement. In 1807, the British Parliament passed the Abolition of the Slave Trade Act, making the transatlantic slave trade illegal throughout the British Empire. The act prohibited British ships from engaging in the slave trade, and the Royal Navy was deployed to intercept slave ships and enforce the law. Britain actively promoted the abolition of slavery internationally. Britain used its political and economic influence to pressure other nations to abolish slavery, and it signed treaties with various countries to enforce anti-slavery measures. The British Empire's anti-slavery policies had a significant impact on global attitudes and contributed to the decline of the slave trade and slavery worldwide. Following the abolition of the slave trade, efforts shifted towards the emancipation of enslaved individuals. The Slavery Abolition Act of 1833, introduced by Lord Stanley and later passed by Parliament, abolished slavery throughout the British Empire. This bolstered efforts for the gradual emancipation of enslaved people, with enslaved individuals over the age of six transitioning to an apprenticeship system before gaining full freedom. The act also included provisions for compensation of slaveholders, which led to controversy and debates over reparations that are still going on till this day. And that brings us to the end. Which of these uncomfortable truths do you think we need to be talking about more? As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.